And now again, so that regimes which are friendly to the Zionists, or pliant with the Zionists, can now replace like those in Libya and in Syria. So we are seeing a return to the Arab Spring, and uh, we know that on this occasion, the outcome is going to be different. On the last occasion, it was a walkover. They, they, they achieved all their objectives. And they were able to establish uh, a state of Israel in the Holy Land as a consequence of that first Arab Spring. But on this occasion, their stakes are much higher. On this occasion, they're doing these things so that they can cause the state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world, replacing the United States of America. This is a branch of knowledge that is known as eschatology. And I am speaking from Islamic eschatology. And those who know me would know that I've been expressing these views for the last 15, 20 years, that Israel is now going to make an effort, or the Zionists are now going to make an effort to cause the state of Israel to replace the United States of America as the ruling state in the world. The difference between the first Arab Spring and this Arab Spring is a man named Putin and a country named Russia. And he says that Putin said, don't worry about that. Israel will take care of Iran. Those were his words. Well, I think they have a surprise coming their way. If they think that Israel and Putin are friends of each other. Because on this occasion, the attack is not only on Syria, and they've not been able to succeed in Syria largely because of Russia and China. The attack is also on Iran. And because they are so obstinately, and I choose my language carefully, they have a pig-headed obsession of ruling the world. The implication is that regardless of consequences, even if it's going to be nuclear war, even if millions and millions and millions are going to die, Israel is not going to be hindered. They're going to continue pig-headedly with the effort to subdue Iran and Pakistan and Egypt and Syria. And in the process, they're going to cross the line. And when, that cross, when they cross that line, they're going to confront Putin. That's the comment I want to make. So he's talking about today. So at that time when Jerusalem is flourishing, Yathrib or Medina would be in a state of desolation. At that time, he said, the great war will occur. And that great war is going to lead to the conquest of Constantinople. And so the conquest in 1455, I believe, of the city of Constantinople by the Ottoman Turks was a flash in the pan. It's not the one that's coming. The one that's coming is the one that prophesied. And when that conquest of Constantinople takes place, of course, the implication will be that NATO will be thrown out. And if NATO is thrown out of Constantinople, that's to Russia's advantage. When Constantinople is conquered, he said, that is the time when the Antichrist will make his appearance, meaning make his appearance in our world of space and time, in the form of a human being. And so Turkey has a 
prominent role to play in world affairs and in the affairs of the Muslim world in the very near future. And in Turkey, it is the city of Constantinople that's going to be center stage. Here. Does, does the Sheikh think the crisis in Syria has caused the foretold split between Gog and Magog? It is clear that Gog and Magog are now moving in the direction of a head-on collision which we anticipated. Uh, Gog being the Anglo-American Zionist Alliance which has NATO as its military arm and Magog being Russia but Russia is also Christian Russia. There are two Russias there. Um, and that conflict between Gog and Magog, which is most likely to be one of the use of nuclear weapons, uh, appears to me to be now inevitable. Inevitable. It's just a matter of time. So yes, my answer is yes indeed. Gog and Magog are now moving towards a head-on collision. And it's the Syrian crisis. Because eschatology places the area of Syria and Turkey as the most volatile region of the world and the one which is going to witness the Great War. Uh, the world of Islam is not homogeneous. I have identified one sectarian movement that used to be called the Wahhabis. Uh, who are being uh, exploited and used by a Pied Piper. And that Piper, that Pied Piper plays the tune and they dance to the tune because they are deficient in understanding. They do not understand that they're being taken for a ride. Uh, the reason why the Zionists want these so-called Islamic governments in power around Israel is because these so-called Islamic governments can then be manipulated uh, by, remote, by remote control to act in a way that will provide Israel with causes bellum. Israel wants to wage a big war which will decimate the Arab population around the Holy Land, bring about a substantial reduction in the, in the population of the Arab world. Uh, but Israel does not want to wage that big war and appear as an aggressor. So she needs an excuse. And that excuse was uh, manufactured and it's, it is emerging. It began with the Arab Spring and then uh, pre predictably with the emergence of so-called Islamic governments. Uh, but the stumbling block in the way is Syria. And if they do not succeed in Syria, their plans will go to naught, all fall down. So Syria is do or die for them. They cannot afford to fail. And this is why Hillary Clinton is now hysterical. The Russia and China will pay a horrible price. A reading between the lines, I believe it's a Turkish invasion of Syria that's coming, but I can be wrong. And so the bottom line is that the Islamic, so-called Islamic, governments uh, emerging as part of a plan that will allow Israel to declare that we are now under grave threat, that Islam is rising in the world and Islam constitutes a menace to Israel and to mankind. And that's, that seems to be the plan at work. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is 
Thursday, September 6, 2012. I'm Darko. I haven't shown that much video in a while as far as um, uh, syndicated or whatever you want to call it um, in the beginning. Um, I'm going to probably cover this, uh, this Middle East type stuff in about three videos. I'd like to do it in two, but I really wanted to get um, uh, the Sheikh Hossein, I think his name is. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got these two different videos included in there because one was from May 19th, 2012. I'm talking about Constantinople and that, and um, this uh, this most recent one on Turkey. It's titled "Turkish Threat of Invading Syria," and this is from two months ago, July 11th, 2012. And wait till I get to the news I'm going to be covering here. So, um, with that being said, let's just get moving. CIA chief leaves Turkey after one day visit, September 4th, 2012. Uh, CIA Director David Petraeus ended his one-day visit to Istanbul, or Constantinople, uh, late on Monday, leaving the city to return to the U.S. in a private jet. So his program was kept secret for security reasons, but I think we all know why he was there. They're changing up the plans here, guys. Their mercenary terrorists aren't getting the job done, the Al-Qaeda and the Islamists from Libya and stuff like that from their Arab Spring. So now um, they haven't got their no-fly zone, and Turkey's been a prominent player here with the buffer zone along the borders, and it's been heating up uh, with the uh, with that area near, um, uh, well, de facto Kurdistan. But they did say the CIA and MIT are cooperating closely to collect intelligence on the situation in Syria. So it goes on here and it says this MIT, the National Intelligence Organization over there, is also working with the CIA to monitor developments in neighborhood Iran and Iraq. And don't, let's not forget about Israel. They're also re, uh, providing intelligence and uh, satellite transmission uh, uh, reconnaissance as well. So, But this, just remember those countries, uh, Iran and Iraq. Turkey accuses Syria of state terrorism. So now uh, September 5th. So... Petraeus is over there September 4th. No, the next day, Turkey accuses Syria of state terrorism. So go figure, right? Turkey accused Syria of state terrorism Wednesday after a sharp spike in death toll. So it doesn't really matter what they said, right? And they were told to jump, and they said, how high, right? So the, Turkey's doing their dirty work for them, and, uh, and then afterwards, they're going to cut them loose. Turkish officers take command of Syrian rebel brigades uh, North Israel on alert. Turkish army officers have assumed direct command of the first two Syrian rebel brigades fighting Assad's government forces, according to Depka Files' exclusive sources. This step has sent military tensions rocketing on Israel's northern borders. Of course, that's what they want, right? To be attacked, right? Uh, we're being attacked. We have to defend ourselves with uh, Syria and Lebanon in case of a backlash. So it says here, the consequences of Turkish military action in Syria were urgently aired with CIA Director Petraeus when he arrived in Ankara on Monday the 3rd. Petraeus discussed with Turkish military uh, intelligence chiefs and the likely Syrian, Iranian, and Hezbollah responses. He then flew to his bosses in uh, Zionist Israel to, to see what his next orders will be. So it goes on and it says that U.S. Turkish Israeli intelligence watchers were reporting unusual military movements in Syria and Hezbollah turf in southern Lebanon, suspected of being uh, preparations for a blowback from the Turkish intervention or invasion of Syria. Remember, I covered that article about the Hezbollah, uh, Hezbollah leader saying that uh, we're going to basically uh, uh, make it a living hell for you, Israel, if you, do, if you keep uh, encroaching in Lebanon and in Syria. Uh, but maybe they're uh, part of the, uh, you know, the puppets that are getting their, pull string, their strings pulled so that uh, they can go on the defense, right? And say, oh, see, look what they're doing. The Israeli Defense Force countered by placing its units guarding the Syrian and Lebanese borders on a state of alert. So this is what prompted uh, Turkish Prime Minister to say that, uh, or declare that the regime in Syria has now become a terrorist state. It's funny because the Free Syrian Army terrorists, their transitional government is actually based in Turkey. And they allow the terrorists to come over the border, re, uh, recruit, rearm, and go back and wreak havoc on civilians and the Syrian forces. So they're actually a sponsor, a state sponsor of terrorism, like our uh, like our buddy countries over there in the West. NATO will do its utmost to protect Turkey, says Rasmussen. So now this is NATO saying he's closely following developments. I'm sure he is, right? In other words, he's taking orders, saying the world's largest defense organization is ready to do its utmost to protect its ally, Turkey, right? So we know France is actually telling the terrorists to create their own government, and they're funding them directly. This uh, veteran war surgeon, Jacques Beret, says uh, he supports the establishment of a no-fly zone. The irony is that no one else could fly except NATO, who will bomb civilians and kill even more. 
than the civilian terrorists they're raiding.